Stop wasting your money. There is literally only one thing you need to be a programmer, and it's not what you think it is. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And now you're probably thinking, what is that one thing that you need in order to become a programmer? Because obviously you want it, you want to be a programmer, so what is this one thing? Well, it's not a fancy computer, a fancy laptop, the next graphics card, the coolest processor. All it is, is passion or dedication or desire to become a programmer. As long as you have some desire to become a programmer, that's all that you actually need to be a programmer. And you're probably thinking, well, don't you need a computer? Don't you need a fancy laptop, fancy desktop, big monitors, all that cool stuff? No, you technically don't even need a computer to become a programmer. And yes, you heard me correctly. You don't even need a computer in order to learn how to be a programmer. But how exactly can you get by becoming a programmer without ever using a computer? Well, one way that you could do is, you know, use your phone. If you already have a phone, you could use that to watch tutorials and practice programming on. But that's definitely not ideal, especially for programming on. So what you instead could do is find free public computers that you can use to practice programming. And you can use sites like CodePen and Code Sandbox, which are just websites. Go to those websites and you can practice programming real applications on them. So for example, you could go to your library, use their free and publicly available computers in order to watch tutorials and also go to CodePen or Code Sandbox and create and learn programming from scratch. So you don't even need to spend a single dollar. You can use free resources that are available to you. And let's say that you don't have a public library nearby or you don't have free computers that you can use available. Another option would be looking towards your friends and family and neighbors to see if any of them have a really old computer they don't need, or maybe they just have a computer they're trying to get rid of, and that you can possibly go and ask them, hey, can I have that computer for free if you're just going to throw it away or get rid of it? Or maybe I can pay you a little bit of money, you give me that computer for just a small exchange. Or maybe even just, can I borrow your computer on certain days when you're not using it? That's another great way to try to get a computer for free or really, really cheap. But let's just say you don't want to go to the library because it's kind of inconvenient and you don't have anyone nearby you that's giving out free computers or has cheap computers. So what do you do next? You obviously need to buy the most powerful, craziest computer with a huge 49 inch wide monitor, right? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. Why would you need all of that stuff to become a programmer? It's actually a pretty common misconception that you need a powerful computer in order to run all of these super crazy cool programs. Well, what most people don't realize is most websites are run on super, super cheap little servers on the web. And these servers are significantly less powerful than even the cheapest computer that you can find. Because these servers are incredibly limited on resources and they usually share the resources with tons of other websites, especially smaller sites that you're thinking about running. So if you could run your entire business, your entire website on a super cheap server, why would you need an expensive computer to develop it? And sure, you're going to use slightly more resources with all the fancy hot module reloading stuff in your code, but do you really need a powerful computer in order to do that? Spoiler alert, you don't. The computer that I use for all of my programming is over four years old, and on top of that, I do all of my programming and video recording on this computer. So I'm not only programming, but at the same time, I'm using my recording software, which is much, much more demanding than programming, both at the same time, and I have no issues at all with programming. I can do everything just fine on this over four year old computer. So if I can use an over four year old computer to not only record, edit, upload videos onto YouTube, but also program, then you can definitely do the same thing on an even older or even cheaper computer. You could find a perfectly good computer for programming for a hundred, maybe even $200. And that's going to get you something that's going to last you years and years and not just something that you're going to have to throw away after a few months. You can find these used on places like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or even just looking around in your neighborhood or other places to try to find these used or older computers. And that way you can get started for incredibly, incredibly cheap. Let's say you don't have $100 or $200 to spend on a computer. What you could do instead is buy something like a tablet. Just buy a cheap tablet and then buy a cheap external keyboard. You could find those incredibly cheaply and then use something like CodePen or Code Sandbox again, and you can use those to program on just like a normal environment. You have your keyboard, which is really nice because using a touchscreen would really suck for programming. But that cheap keyboard plus a cheap tablet, again, gives you a place to start with programming, even if you have very little to no money at all. You can find those things incredibly cheaply, especially used older models. So we've talked a bit about how you don't really need an expensive computer at all to program, but what if you have the money to spend and you want to buy the things that are going to give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to programming or just computer use in general. What I would recommend 
The very first thing you want to buy if you really want to try to improve yourself as a programmer or make your programming experience more enjoyable is to buy a second monitor. This is obviously not required by any means. I mean, I programmed for years and years and years with only one monitor. I got my first job before I even owned a second monitor. I only owned one. So I did plenty on my own with just one monitor and you can do as well. But having a second monitor is really useful when it comes to programming and testing websites because you can have your code full screen on one monitor, your website full screen on another monitor. I think it's really enjoyable and a nicer way to program, but you don't need it. But if you have the cash to buy another, you know, cheap used monitor, you can get them relatively cheaply and that's a great addition to your setup. Another thing that I would recommend if you're building out your computer or just buying a computer in general is try to look for one that has a solid state drive instead of a hard drive. Again, not at all required but it just makes your computer overall quicker and more enjoyable to use for things that aren't even program related. Just anything in general will open up and load faster. So I'd recommend getting a solid state drive if you can. And most computers, especially newer computers, come with solid state drives instead of a hard drive. So you at least have that option available, which is really nice. And lastly, something that I would look at is if you're just looking at programming only, don't bother getting a graphics card at all. You're not gonna need a dedicated graphics card to do programming because the one built into your CPU or whatever is going to be plenty fine for you. You don't need a dedicated graphics card, so you can get by without even buying one and just using the one built into your CPU or getting a really, really cheap one if you really want to have one. But again, you don't need a graphics card if you're just gonna be using your computer to program. And this may seem crazy that you don't need to spend a lot of money or any money at all to become a programmer, and that's because when you look at places like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, when people post their setups, they always have, you know, the $3,000 Apple computer. They have these massive curved monitors, which cost thousands of dollars. Everything's in 4K. They have this crazy desk setup, but you don't need any of that to become a programmer. Really, these are just things that you can buy if you really enjoy the tech side of things and really enjoy going over the top, but you don't need any of this. I mean, the monitor that I first bought when I wanted to buy a second monitor, I bought at a furniture store and I used it for four, five, six years until I finally got rid of it and it was still working just fine. I just wanted to upgrade to something new because I could afford it and that monitor was a really cheap monitor I bought at a furniture store. But it got me through almost everything. I started my YouTube channel on that monitor. I programmed all of my videos on that monitor for my YouTube channel when I started. It was perfectly fine and I didn't need to spend a lot of money on it. I mean, it's really tempting when you look at YouTube channels like Linus Tech Tips and you see all of the coolest and newest computer gadgets and gizmos coming out that you want to buy them. I mean, when the new NVIDIA graphics cards came out, I was really tempted to want to go out and buy one because they looked so cool. They're so much more powerful than my card, which is over four years old now. But I realized I don't need it. I can render all my videos just fine for YouTube. I can program everything I need to just fine. Any games I play, I can play just fine on the graphics card I have. So why would I upgrade? I don't need it and it's expensive. Those things are very expensive. So why would I spend, you know, $300 on that when instead I could spend these $300 on something much more useful? In the end, don't let not having the greatest and latest and coolest technology hold you back from being a programmer. You don't need any of it. Like I said at the beginning, the only thing you need to become a programmer is a dedication or desire to become a programmer. If you have that, it doesn't matter what your difficulties are economically, you are going to find the path you need in order to become a programmer. And with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you should check out some of my other discussion based videos, link them over here and also subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.